Cardiovascular diseases represent a substantial portion of the current healthcare expenditure. Controlling lipid levels in at-risk populations remains an important part of prevention and management strategies. Now, this AJMC peer exchange panel of experts in cardiovascular diseases and managed care will discuss the optimal management of cholesterol, including the role for newer, more expensive therapeutic options. I'm Dr. Peter Salgo. I'm a professor of medicine and anesthesiology at Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons and an associate director of surgical intensive care at New York Presbyterian Hospital. Participating today on our distinguished panel are Dr. Seth Baum, President of the American Society for Preventive Cardiology, Chief Medical Officer at Excel Medical Trials, and an Affiliate Clinical Professor of Clinical Biomedical Science at the Charles E. Schmidt College of Medicine of Florida Atlantic University. Dr. Gary Johnson, a Family Physician and Managed Care Medical Director. Dr. Jennifer Strohacker, Director of Medicare Pharmacy Clinical Operations at Molina Healthcare in Long Beach, California. And Dr. Howard Weintraub, a clinical professor of medicine at NYU School of Medicine, clinical director of NYU Center for the Prevention of Cardiovascular Disease, and the treasurer of the American Society for Preventive Cardiology. I want to thank everybody here for joining us. We've got a lot to discuss. Why don't we just sort of lay the groundwork over here. Um, what is the burden of managing cardiovascular disease in this country right now? Uh, the burden is enormous. It's, uh, the cardiovascular disease still remains the number one cause of death in the United States, in, in the United States, uh, death and disability as well. So, you know, we often look at cardiovascular disease as uh, dying from heart disease, but there are other elements as well. People can have strokes and then there's a disability associated with a stroke or, or an infarct or an infarct at a young age and it affects the entire family. So it, it really is a, an enormous problem. I mean, look, we're in the age of the statins, right? We're in the age of enlightenment. We're in the age of everybody should be eating properly. And yet, if I get the numbers right, one in every three deaths in this country is cardiovascular related in some way. That, that's that, huge. That's, that's what are we correct. doing wrong? Uh, we're doing a lot wrong. Uh, for, for one thing, compliance is a problem. Uh, patients are often prescribed medications and, and they don't take them. Uh, sometimes they're not prescribed medications that they should be prescribed. Uh, and all things considered, if you look at just simply look at, at lipid levels, uh, and let's say we have a goal of less than 70 milligrams per deciliter for, for somebody with uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, uh, about 20% of Americans with that, uh, that problem are at goal. But, well, so let's put this in. Major issue. If I may, a different perspective. Okay. okay. Certainly there's, there's the carnage out there. Simple death, disease, disability, but it costs money. That gets people's attention. Um, my number here, about one in every three health care dollars. Is that a fair number? It makes a lot of sense. The problem, to add to what Seth said, is that we're late for the party when we deal with this because we're attending to people who enter the health care system maybe unexpectedly in their 40s or 50s or kind of anticipatedly in their 60s or 70s. When you take someone out of the, out of the cycle who should be earning money and instead is removing it from the system, this is a problem. So that's part of the unseen costs. But the rest of it comes down to medicine and the tests that we do to define the disease are also very costly. And be doctor visits, ER visits, the cost of putting a stent in someone's coronary from soup to nuts is 50 grand. You do a million of those a year, so you get someone's attention. I think this is a very complex problem. You know, was it Edward, Edward Dirksen who once said, a million here, a million there. Yeah, right. Soon you're getting getting into real right, exactly. But but and then it goes even deeper than that. It's a societal issue or uh, you know social structural issue uh, in that people are not eating well, people are not exercising, people are are you know getting heavier. Diabetes is increasing. I mean, there's so many things that are going wrong in the United States. And and to that point, to your question about what are we doing wrong, you have to define we. What are we doing as clinicians wrong? But what are we doing as society? Uh, incorrectly or suboptimally. In what sense? What are you trying to say? Well, in terms of lifestyle, in terms of eating properly, exercising, those sorts of things. But is that surprising? Every time I pick up the newspaper, I would say two times a week, there's some article about this is the diet that now is recommended so that you won't get a heart attack. And one week it's eat lots of meat and one week it's no, 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 only grains. So is it surprising the American public's confused? What do consumers do when they're overloaded? They do nothing. 
all right? And so what ends up happening is there's some Schmendrick who puts his name on a diet. It gets to be the diet of the week until someone smart gets up and says, you've got to be joking me. This is going to put you in a box. And then ultimately people and then makes migrate another in diet. and out. What? <laughs> and, and then it creates diet. another diet. That's exactly correct. <laughs> Exactly correct. Right. And I think that, that all, you, and then if you take your dietary advice from a movie star, you deserve whatever you get, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and I, I think there comes a time in which, and, and, and here's the real problem. The AHA came forth with their diet, step one and step two, and they put people that were pre-diabetics firmly into diabetes because they said eat no fat, eat only carbs and protein. So these people were munching pasta every day of the week, bragging about it as they got fatter, their bellies got bigger, and all of a sudden their sugars just zoomed up, and now they had something new to brag about. They were gonna die even sooner because they've now become diabetics.